Hey guys, Slavical here from Misguided Games. Tonight, we're going to be doing the inventory menu. Before we get started, give me a few minutes to get the music set up. So, let's hold on for one moment. Alright, trying to get the music set up. All right, guys. Okay, so having some issues with the music, sadly, although some would probably prefer it without the music. Oh, okay, so like I said earlier today, um, the focus will be to briefly go over the inventory system that I was able to finish, explain what it does and how it works, showcase what it does in uh, the editor, and then build off from that and make the, the UI part of the inventory system. So what I want to make is an inventory menu which will list all the items that are not equipped in the player's inventory and it's going to be divvied up by category right now we only have one category that's weapons um, but in the future when more item when more items are added we'll divvy it up by category and then have another menu which will show the currently equipped items. So to begin, I'll showcase what this does. Actually, I need to do something real quick before I do that. 
I need to delete this save. So if I just run it, guy pops in. And I'm gonna unhook the right saved game, delete this, compile save, and I will go to the main menu map. Alright, so if I play this, oh, I want it to show up in the viewport. There we go. So this is what the main menu will look like. As you can see, it spawns the character into the main menu map. And I've changed the way the main menu uh, looks. And then if we look at the output log, we see hmm, equipped weapons found populating using saved info. It's not what I wanted. Let's try this again. Okay, so quits. Oh, I gotta close out Steam. I always forget to do that. I always forget to close Steam. Okay, now let's see what the output log says. Okay, so this is what I was expecting and this is what I wanted. So we failed to read the save game file, which is no equipped weapons were found, populating using default inventory. So this means there was no save file, so we're going to populate the player's inventory using the weapons that we have here. So the assault rifle and the pistol. And there are uh, currently two slots available for weapons. So I cancel it. If I play it again, it's going to say the same thing. Oh, it did save. How did it save? Oh, I know. It is really interesting that it saved. Anyways, so when there is a saved file, the button text changes from new game to continue game and then the weapon items from the save file are used to populate onto the character from their inventory. And as you can see, they are spawned and they are attached. And so if I go to continue game, whoop, I was unpossessed there. So if I go to continue game, here's my guy. So how does all of this work? So this is a, going to be a mixture of blueprints and C++. So as soon as the game starts, the game instance is called and it loads a save game. And then there's this function called handle loaded save game. So when that is called, handle loaded save game. 
checks if the loaded saved game is a sci-fi save game. If it is, then the load was successful. If it is not, then create a new save file and add the default inventory. Usually happens for new games. So in the last stream I was having issues with the the inventory not saving and that's because I was not creating a uh, saved game um, object and so it was not able to save anything because there wasn't anything to save to. So what this does if the load was not successful it's going to create a new current saved game and that is a, a sci-fi save game object located in the header class or sorry located in the header file and then it populates the player's inventory with the default inventory and then it also returns true or false depending on if there is a saved game So going back to the game instance, if this returns false, then we're going to call write saved game. So we see here, there's just one line of code in, in this function, async save game to slot. So this is where we have a, a slot where the saved game is a slot that's associated to the saved game. Uh, I think I just have this currently saved as the save game slot. But in theory, you could have multiple slots, so you can have seven slots, and the player can have seven different characters. So we have a save slot, then a save user index, and then the result of this async uh, save game to this function called handle async save. This is a function that's called whether the, a the async save was successful or if it failed and that is represented by this parameter here bool b success and currently it doesn't do anything right now. So going back uh, so handle loaded save game false goes into that right saved game function which I just showcased true doesn't do anything and then we have our default inventory here and now the question is okay so the inventory is populated now how does the player use those items so that is handled in the controller. So this also requires more blueprint stuff to look at. Uh, it's in character, player, blueprints. So if you notice, I have two character classes and two player controller classes. I have a menu and game for each one. So the menu is the blueprint that inherits from the C++ class. And then the game, as you can see here, native parent class, sci-fi player controller. Um, or sorry, the parent class is um, BP player controller. So this inherits from, the game inherits from the menu. So that's how I have it set up, and the reason for that is that there are functions that I only want to be called in the game. So I'll go ahead and show that. If you remember in the, um, the menu streams, the menu videos that I made, I created a function or sorry, I created an event called begin playing state. And this is called whenever the player controller has possessed a pawn and both the pawn and player controller are ready to play the game. 
So whenever that is all set, it calls this function load inventory. So here is load inventory. We're going, we have two variables that we look at, inventory data and equipped items. Those are variables here in the header file. So we empty those by calling their functions. We get the sci-fi game instance, and if it's valid, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the um, the item slot mapping. So if you remember, in the game instance, we had two uh, variables associated to the inventory. We had default inventory, and we had item slot mapping. And here we have two slots available for weapon items. So that means the player character can only have two weapons equipped at uh, the same time. So what this is going to do is it's going to get that variable, and I created a getter in the game instance. The getter looks like this. Um, here it is. It looks like this. So get item slot mapping. It's a const function, and it returns the variable, and it passes it by reference, or it returns it by reference. I don't know how you would word it, but it doesn't make a copy. And then here, get item slot mapping. So we iterate through all the item um, slot mappings that we have in this variable. So in the blueprint that I showed, we had weapon items in two slots. So it's going to iterate one time because there's only one element in the map. That's weapon and two. And it's going to um, initialize those slots and create those slots. So it's essentially going to create two slots for weapons. And it's going to make the weapon occupying that, that slot null, uh, null pointer. So this is going to be an empty slot. So if I was to go into my blueprint and make this a three, and I go to this line right here, this little uh, paragraph of code, this is going to create three slots for weapons. And it's going to continue to do this for every single item type. So if I was to add like armor or consumables or skills, it will iterate through weapons, give it three slots. Skills, give it however many slots I've assigned. Armor, however many slots I've assigned. And it's going to initialize those slots and put um, and make those empty by putting a null pointer in as the item. So now that the slots are all set up and ready to go, we go through the uh, saved game file. And we do that by getting the game instance and simply calling the get current saved game. All that does, current saved game variable here, is returned here in the get current saved game. So right here. So with the current saved game received, we check if it's valid. If it is valid, we get the asset manager. We get the uh, sci-fi asset manager, our specific asset manager that we created. And now we iterate through that saved file list of items, which is called inventory data. So I'll go ahead and open that. So here we have three variables that are saved in this sci-fi save game class. Inventory data and equipped items. So 
what this section of code does is it's going to get every item listed in the saved game files inventory data so every item listed in the saved file it's going to call the asset manager and it's going to call this force load item function that we made and it's going to load that item and then with the item loaded it's going to go and simply add it to the inventory data simple as or sorry it's, yeah it's going to add it to the inventory data the inventory data again being oh hey Danny K yeah um, I always comment this thoroughly um, thank you I appreciate that um, I'm OCD so commenting is something that is important to me and if you ever work so I guess a little sidebar conversation is I do development for my nine to five job and I work with people offshore who work in India and work with people who are all over the United States and so whatever comments they leave behind allows me to know what they're thinking or what they've done and whatever comments I leave is going to let them know what I've done if you just make a little comment that doesn't describe what it does then the person could get lost or they could have a hard time understanding it I like to keep things simple and I like to uh, make it understandable so anyone can go and read the read the comments and be like oh that's what the code does hey Ripper Junkie thank you for joining good to have you buddy okay so current saved game inventory data asset manager loads those item loads that specific item and then adds it into the player controllers inventory data so remember we have two different inventory datas we have the inventory data that is in the save game class so right here and we have the inventory data in the player controller so to keep things short inventory data is populated by let's see the players list of items which is populated by the sci-fi saved game class. There we go. Make it more descriptive. And skills, which is populated by the sci-fi saved game class. Oops. Okay, so now with the inventory data populated, the next step is to populate the equipped items. So it's the same concept here. Uh, I do have a Boolean, has equipped items. So what it does is it goes through the current saved games list of equipped items. and it's going to check that the slot is um, that um, that slot can be filled by filled by that item that's essentially what it does and then if that slot can be filled by that item so if you have an armor slot and a weapon item this is going to return false and then it just goes on to the next element in the uh, map but if this line right here returns true so you have uh, a weapon slot and you have a weapon item ok 
can I don't mean to distract you, but do you think you can show how you are making a loading system more in depth today? Hmm. So I do plan on making a loading system. Uh, currently, there is no need to make a loading screen right now because there is nothing for the game to load. Um, I will make that a stream all of its own though, Ripper Junkie. Uh, I won't do that today because the focus for today is making the inventory menu using this inventory system. But um, I'll probably get to a, a loading screen is like one of those things where you want to do the finishing touches to a game. So <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for understanding, Ripper Junkie. Uh, it, but I, I will say this: that making a uh, asynchronous loading screen is super important. There's a video uh, about it. I, I showed that video off in the menu system part one video, and I talked about the importance of making an asynchronous loading screen because you get to do stuff like. You can have Pong on your loading screen, and because it's on a separate thread, it's not going to take up any bandwidth while Unreal Engine is loading up your map in the background. You know, so it becomes more efficient, and because of that, you can do things like uh, create a progress bar for your loading screen. Can't do that on the same game thread um, because then the game is going to be updating the progress bar while loading the game at the same time. It's going to take up all that bandwidth. Okay, so continuing on with the equipped items, if we have a weapon slot and a weapon item, that means that slot can be equipped with, or it can be, yeah, can be equipped with that item. So now we're going to use the Asset Manager again, and we're going to load that item. And then, again, we're going to... or Sorry, sorry. I take that back. This line right here, just make sure that the slot is valid. Um, sorry, the um, item type for that slot is valid. Then we load the item. And then this line right here checks to make sure that the um, item is the item slot is valid and can be used for that uh, that item and it makes sure that the item was successfully loaded if all of that is true then it simply adds the item to the equipped items map in that slot so slot pair key is the slot and loaded item is the item that's going into that slot. And now I have this boolean here, B has equipped items. Uh, so currently this is set to false. And what this is going to do, if this is, if items were successfully loaded, if a, equipped items were successfully loaded from the current saved game, and those items were placed in that slot, then we're going to make this true. And that's important because this last bit right here is going to um, populate the inventory data based on if the items were not equipped. So if we have, um, say for example, we don't have a saved game, so there's no equipped items. So how is the player going to equip those items and display them in the main menu, right? How are you going to equip the default inventory? It's going to be done 
by checking if B has equipped weapons is false. So if there were no equipped weapons from the saved game, then we simply iterate through the inventory data, which is only going to have the uh, default inventory list. And then it's going to equip the item in any empty slot. And that's what this function does right here. Equip item in empty slot. <sighs> okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the asset ID for that item. The asset ID would be weapon or consumable or skill or um, armor. And that is handled well it's first created in the asset manager right here weapon item type right actually hold on yeah so we have the weapon item type that's the asset type and this is looking for yeah the asset type yeah so here we have weapon item type. And then here I give weapon item type item type a value of weapon. So that's in the asset manager, so the asset manager knows what a weapon is. And then in the weapon class, right here I get the asset manager and I say this items item type is a weapon so this is going to get let's say we're trying to equip a weapon this is going to get that weapon type and then it's going to instantiate an empty item slot so we have an item in an empty slot so now right here, this loop right here is going to look for any empty slots in the equipped items map. So any item or any empty slots um, in that equipped items map. So the first check it's going to do is it's going to see it's going to see if the uh, items item type matches or sorry, if the item's item type matches with the item type specified for that slot. So let's say the first slot in the equipped items map is an armor slot. Well, a weapon item can't fit in an armor slot, so it's going to skip it. When it finally does reach a slot that's specified for a weapon, this is going to be weapon, the type for that item is going to be weapon and then it's going to be like okay this item can fit this slot next up we're going to say does that slot already have this item so basically we're saying is this item already equipped do I already have a, an assault this assault rifle in my weapon slot yes I do well then weapon is already equipped no need to keep iterating through this, so we leave the loop. And now it's going to check to if this fails, then that means the item is not equipped in that slot. So now this is where we're going to do a check. Is that slot empty? If you remember, all the way up here in load inventory right here we made we initialized the slots in the equip items map and made them all empty so if that slot is empty and if that slots or if that uh, empty slot slot number is greater than that item slot slot number 
then that means we have found an empty slot. So what is this slot number? This used to be uh, that variable that we created. So we're in our sci-fi types um, class. Oh, thank you, Ripper Junkie. Uh, as a note, the ma the whole idea of this came from Action RPG. So you can look at Action RPG. A lot of this is going to roughly be the same. I made a few tweaks. Very minor though. But I made a few tweaks. But the majority of this you'll, you can look at on your own in Action RPG. So I can't take full credit. Um, so, oh yeah, slot number. So this was, this used to be the variable called number of slots. Come to find out the variable, na the variable naming convention was wrong. This is actually this slot current number in the list of available slots. So if you remember, here I have the item slot mapping set to uh, 3. So that means this slot number can either be 0, 1, or 2. And the reason for that is when uh, data is stored in things like arrays or uh, array lists or in this case uh, a tmap, your index will start at zero. You have three items in an array the index for those three items would be one or zero, one, two, uh, in that order. So, if this empty slot is greater than the uh, um, the item, this uh, item slots slot number, then we found an empty slot. And if we have found an empty slot, we simply return to that we have found an empty slot and we have equipped it with an item. Right here, we equip that item into that empty slot and then we call this this uh, log. Okay, so that <laughs> that is how items are automatically added at the beginning of the game when you start a new game. So going back to load inventory. Now that our items have been added to empty slots, um, we determine if we should shave, we sh if we should save the game. If there's been any changes, this will be true. And if there were any changes, then we save the inventory. Saving the inventory is pretty simple. We just get the game instance, the sci-fi game instance. We get the current saved game. We empty out the current saved game's inventory data and equipped items. So it's completely empty, clean, and then we simply just populate it, populate the inventory data in the current saved game with all the values located in the player controller's inventory data. So here we reference this player controller's inventory data. We check to see if it's valid. If it is valid, 
we just simply store it in the current saved game and we do this for every item same thing with equipped items we checked if it's valid if it is or the player controllers equipped items we check if it's valid if it is we just add it to the current saved game do that for every equipped item once we're done we just save the game that's simple so now that it's been saved here is here we make a broadcast so going back to our sci-fi types the very top here I have created a delegate and blueprints this would be the same as an event dispatcher so this delegate ta uh, takes in one parameter which is a sci-fi player controller so what I do is I um, in the header I created a reference to that delegate I call it and I broadcast and I send this control this player controller instance okay so now the inventory is completely done this broadcast this uh, delegate is broadcasted so what happens next so from player controller menu to player character menu you can see we have an event here this event is called on inventory loaded it has one parameter which is um, inventory source so if this looks familiar it's because this is well actually I have to showcase that give me <laughs> we haven't gone over this yet There we go. Okay. So in the sci-fi character class, this sci-fi character class is the parent class of the uh, player character menu class or blueprint. Okay. So I overrode this possessed by function now this function is a server only function so that means it's only called on the server and it happens whenever a pawn is possessed so this is before this begin playing state so that means that I can do stuff um, before I actually load the inventory because if you remember the inventory is called in the beginning state so it goes possessed by pawn is possessed and then player controller and pawn say we're ready to play and then begin playing state is fired and this is important because I get to do this. In that possessed by function, I get the new controller, I cast it to the sci fi player controller, and then I get that inventory loaded delegate. And I bind it to an event called on inventory loaded. So. Here we go, character inventory on inventory loaded. So this is an event I created, inventory source, a sci-fi player controller, that's the type that this variable is. Uh, so this event is triggered whenever 
this event gets called whenever this broadcast is sent out. So as soon as the inventory is done loading, this broadcast is sent out. And, it, and since I binded this delegate in the player controller to this on inventory function in the player character or in the sci-fi character that event is called so looking at it from blueprints begin playing state load inventory once the inventory is downloaded that delegate is called and then this on inventory loaded event is triggered. Once this is triggered, I have a function called get equip weapons. So this is a character, or this is a function in the uh, player controller class. Here, get equipped weapons. And you can see I simply um, pass an array in by reference. And since this is not being passed, or there's no const, then this is actually going to be an output instead of an input in the blueprint node because this array can be overwritten. It can be changed in this function. So if we look at get uh, get equip weapons it's going to iterate through every equipped item and it's going to make sure if the item is a weapon if it's not a weapon then it keeps on go then it keeps on going to the next if it is a weapon so right here we check if the cast was successful and it's a weapon and if that weapon matches the weapon type that we've set in the asset manager then we add it to this array here and here we go this is it this is the function so with all of our equipped weapons we now send that list of equipped weapons into player function called spawned equipped weapons so here we have spawned equipped weapons so here it's going to make an actor spawn uh, struct and then it's going to iterate through each uh, weapon list in the equipped weapons away, array. Then it's going to attempt to spawn it. If the spawn was successful, it's going to add it to the weapon loadout. So here, weapon loadout is just a simple array, but if you notice, it contain it's an array of sci-fi weapon actor. So this is very, very important. Our items are divided into two classes. The uh, item class, which is the data asset that we made that stores all the data for um, every item. So the item name, any UI stuff, how much it weighs, what's it's worth, what um, actor is spawned into the world whenever we equip it or whenever we use it stuff like that anything and everything related to an item is stored in that data asset and then the second class is the actor class this is simply an actor that visually represents uh, that item so we can see that if we look at our items, we look at weapons. We have our data assets, right? We have assault rifle common, which has 
the item type, item name, description, the rarity, the counts, all of that stuff. And then we have this actor class, which is where we go and add the skeletal mesh and everything that physically represents this item in, in the world. So our items is divided into two classes. And if you notice in our data asset, we have an actor variable, and that's where we get to choose which actor represents that item. So. The important part is that when we add the weapon to the, the weapon loadout, we call this function, and it's going to make sure that the new weapon and the new weapon actor is valid. We're going to add the weapon actor to that weapon loadout array. And then we're also going to call that weapon actors on added to loadout function. So what this does, and you're going to see that a lot of this was done <laughs> this um a lot of stuff was done off camera. That's why I'm going through all of it. So here we go. On added to loadout. This is called when a weapon actor has been added to the weapon loadout, that character's weapon loadout. It's going to update the weapon data and the my character properties and automatically attach this weapon actor to the holster socket on my character. So in the header class, I have my character and weapon data. So I store references to the data asset and to the character that uh, spawned this weapon in the weapon actor class. And this is important, especially if it comes to replication and multiplayer, um, because the weapon actor needs to know who its owner is. And since we split our item into two, the data asset and the actual actor class that represents that item, we also have to be aware of the data asset associated to that item. So that's where the weapon data uh, variable comes into play. So that add weapon to loadout calls the unadded to loadout function and here we have the data asset. We have the data asset reference or pointer, and we have the character pointer. And then we just simply update the weapon data variable, the set my character. All that does is it checks that this is different from the my character variable that was created and then we update the instigator my character and owner variables okay and then the attached to my character so if you saw in the data asset there's a holster socket and an unholster socket so if I look at the skeletal mesh, you have a socket where the weapon will be when the player is holding it in their hands, and then a socket on the back where the weapon will be when it's not being used. So if I was to add some preview assets, this is what it would look like.
So I've simply stated what those sockets are. The attach to my character function simply gets the character's mesh and attaches that weapon actor to that character at that socket. And that's it. That is the inventory system in a nutshell. Uh, there are some other functions in here. Um, so get inventory data. This is a function used by the, oh, by the add inventory function and the remove inventory item function. So these two functions are the functions that will be used when you want to add an item to the inventory during runtime. So when you're playing the game, you find an item on the ground, you're going to call add item inventory. And that function is blueprint callable. It seems so straightforward when you go through it, but the action RPG example feels like trying to decipher Egyptian, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean, Danny K. It can be very complex, really confusing. I think in my last stream last week, I was attempting to uh, put stuff from the action RPG uh, into here and trying to learn it on the go <laughs> and it was tough and so that's why i had to do all of this off stream because i had to take the time to go and understand what it's doing um in order to know what's going on right sure i could copy and paste but if I copy and paste, I don't know what's doing what or why it's doing what. So if I need to make any changes, I won't know what to do. But thank you, Danny K. Um, I appreciate that. I do my best to try to explain stuff as I go. Um, it's it's hard to to look at action rpg and just understand everything at first glance but uh it's a lot to take in so uh i hope i did a good job of explaining it and i did do a few tweaks uh so like an action rpg they do not bind their um, inventory loaded delegate. So in the player controller, if you remember, this is the delegate um, that I created that will allow me to um, broadcast when the inventory is done being loaded. So that's here in the load in or load inventory function on the inventory loaded broadcast in action RPG they do theirs differently. Let me bring that over. I remove inventory item, add inventory. Yeah, so this is their delegate right here. Notify inventory loaded. And this is a function. Notify inventory loaded. That co that uh, broadcasts both the native delegate and the blueprint delegate. So in their RPG types, they have a delegate that's used in blueprints only and then they have a delegate that's used um, in C++. 
for me, um, I just created a C++ delegate and binded it to a blueprint event. Um, so that's something that I did differently that Action RPG doesn't do. And I like it because thinking from a designer's point of view, if you look at this player controller menu class and you're like, oh, load inventory. Well, what does that do? Call to load the player's inventory and equipped items from their saved game. This function will automatically equip items that needs to be fixed, items the player had equipped from their last play session. If this is a new game, items from the game instances default inventory will be equipped instead. Once the inventory is done loading, a delegate will trigger the on inventory loaded event on the character. Oh, okay, so I'll look at the character. Oh, the on inventory loaded event. Okay, so now I see what happens. It flows. In Action RPG, they make the delegates. I don't even know what those delegates do. I haven't looked at it. I'm sure they do something in the inventory menu that they made. I don't know what. But for me, this made more sense, was to bind a delegate to an event, and then you can just go over here, override, um, let me compile first. There it is, on inventory loaded, boom. Like, this makes sense, this lets me know what's going on. So, binding the delegate to, binding the player controllers on inventory loaded, delegate to the players on inventory loaded event. Something different, but it's something that I think makes sense, especially from a designer's point of view. Because then it just makes like a nice, a nice transition. So you're looking at the sci-fi instance. Okay, cool. I can see how this is all handling the saved game file. If I look at the game mode for the main menu, I can see that there's a player character menu and a player controller menu. Okay, I can look at that. Oh, okay, there's only one event in here. Begin playing state, load the inventory. All right, tells me to go to the character. There's only one event. Oh, on inventory loaded. And it spawned to see quick weapons. That makes sense to me. So, that's that in a nutshell. And then, in case if you're curious, all the um, player controller game does is it gets the parent begin playing state, so loads the inventory, and then displays the HUD, and then controls for the pause menu, and then the controls to move the character. And that is that. That's how the inventory is set up. I'm sorry if that was somewhat confusing. I guess now I can actually, since I explained how it works, I'll showcase it one more time before I start moving on to the inventory menu. Um, so what I need to do is I need to delete this. I should just make like a button so I can delete this. Play it and quit. I'm gonna break and then just go here. All right, so there's no saved file. This is essentially starting from a new game. I click play. 
fail to read, save game, because there wasn't one. So that means this returned false. And it uh, called the write saved game function. No equipped weapon equipped weapons found populating using default inventory. So there's no saved game. So there is no way for equipped weapons to be attached and spawned into the world. So the way to get around that is to use the So we're, we're basically right here. No equipped weapons found, populating using default inventory. Equip item in empty slot. Then here has been equipped in an empty slot. So assault rifle has been equipped in an empty slot. Pistol has been equipped in an empty slot. And then you see it says new game. If I click play. Here I am, and if you see, whoop, if you see, so this was from the main menu. We have a save file now. So equipped weapons found populating using saved info. So rifle has been equipped, pistol has been equipped, and if I was to, did I ever, I did. Oh, I need to fix that. So I can just go quick game, uh, return to main menu. Uh, this didn't change. I have to quit, play, continue game. See, it shows up. But I found a bug. Um, new game does not change to continue game. And that is because, and that is because the, uh, the boolean that I use to switch this is in the game instance. So I should probably change that. <laughs> okay, so continue game, equipped weapons were found, assault rifle and pistol was equipped, continue game, here we go at the map, and we have our pistol and assault rifle equipped. So that's it. And if I was to like equip an assault rifle, it would um, remove the assault rifle from the slot and add the new item, I believe. Okay, so that took way longer than I thought. Um, I didn't think I would spend an hour <laughs> talking about the inventory system, but I appreciate your guys' patience, and so now we're going to move on into the inventory system, or into the inventory menu, and I'm inspired by the division. I like how they have their menu set up. I've also been playing Outriders, which I think is a fun game. Um, their inventory menu, it's not bad. It feels more like a standard RPG inventory menu. I have no issues with it, but if I was to pick who has the better inventory menu, personally, I think the Division's inventory menu is better, so that's something I'm going to model my menu off of. So to do this, what I'm going to do first is create the uh, equipment menu. So just like in the Division, you push a button and like your stats appear, your character stats and your um, equipped weapons will appear. So that's something I'm going to do first. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to create my own user widget class. And sadly, this class is only going to <laughs> it's only going to have one thing. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh 
put sci-fi user widget UI. Hopefully this doesn't kill the stream. We shall see. So while we wait, how's your guys' Friday been? You guys got any plans for the weekend? It's almost done. 86%. Ooh. It's a chugging, it's chugging along. No, Danny K. Am I going to release any of the code on the Unreal Marketplace? Nope. Um, what I plan to do is I'm going to live stream and show the code that I get from shooter game and action RPG and explain it and discuss the changes that I've made to it to fit my project. Um, I'll, I'll show you something actually. Uh, reload. So this weapon actor class, this weapon actor class, this on added to loadout, on removed from loadout, set my character, all of that logic stuff comes from shooter game. And so the idea is that I'm going to live stream and show the code um, that I have put together the stuff that I learned from shooter game, action RPG, the code that you can just look at for free on your own. Um, show you how I've uh, taken both of those projects and mushed them together to make my own project. And then eventually I'll get to a point to where I'll start working on custom stuff and I won't be able to showcase that. I would still well, I won't be able to like show you the code for that, um, but I'll still showcase it and then uh, tell you like a high-level view of what I've done to make it work, and then eventually release this project on Steam as a free demo. Um, so that's kind of like the the high-level idea of this whole thing. Um, kind of take a project scratch, get it all the way up to where it can be played and then published on Steam. Depending on how far this goes, I might even source out, like for example, weapons. I'm using the Weapon Silver Pack, the free ones you get off the marketplace, right? Um, source out uh, modeling contracts on like Fiverr or something so I could get my own custom weapons or weapon models you know show you guys how to do that how I would go about doing that but yeah the whole idea is eventually to get a project from scratch finish it publish it on Steam release it as a demo maybe even go so far as to contract people out, turn this into a game, and you guys are going to go with me from start to finish. Um, 
and right now we're at the beginning all of this code is basically coming from action RPG and shooter game so this is all stuff that you can look at and see on your own so I don't mind showing it to you guys uh, I don't I don't feel like it's right to monetize something that you guys can just look at for free um, so And if I was to monetize it, it would be as a game on, on Steam. So that's the whole idea. And then perhaps maybe you guys, you know, watch through all the videos, you look at the code that I've showed, and it kind of gives you an idea to, <clears throat> excuse me, to like dig into action RPG, dig into the gameplay ability system, dig into game on your own and start doing all of this stuff on your own to make your own stuff. You know? It's to the whole goal is to teach and to encourage, not make a third person cover shooter tutorial series that everyone copies off of and tries to sell in the marketplace. Okay, the widget class I don't think, actually, yeah, this would need the, uh, sci-fi types header. Cool. I don't know why that's, okay. So this is going to be abstract. And there is a function that I want to look at, user widget. So if I look at this and I go, what? owning owning player so this is just going to say player dot context is valid then get player controller or null pointer okay so if I call get owning local player Here we go. Get owning player. Oh, you can. So this is a template function. That's really cool. Get owning player. That's interesting. So if that's a template function. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, here's here's the get owning player, and then here's the templated version. All right, cool, got it, got it, got it, got it. I didn't see that at first. So this is really cool, the fact that it's already uh, templated because, or that it's a template type, I guess is the proper verbiage, because then that makes making my own function super easy
So you may be wondering why <clears throat> I don't just make a reference to the player controller in the blueprint function library. I might just because uh, so far I have a use case where I needed it and if I am going to call the player controller in the widget I'm going to use the widgets function get owning player I wouldn't use the get player controller node I would do the widgets get owning player so this means all I'm going to do is I'm gonna oh you can overwrite this this is virtual that is <laughs> that's actually pretty cool I didn't I didn't even see that so let's get this copy paste So we're going to override this, implement it, and I can't, is this public or protected? It's public. Okay, so let's give it a public declaration. The sci-fi player controller. So let's get this. We're going to have to do an include. A player. And we're going to do the sci-fi player controller. We have to do that because we're going to do a cast here in a second. We're not a cast. We're going to do a. Well, it's a simply. It's essentially a cast, but it's going to be handled using the template function. So here they do get owning player. We're going to do the same thing, except instead of this, we're going to do get owning player a sci-fi player controller it is inaccessible Could I just do this? So maybe I lied, maybe this won't be that easy. Set player text. Oh, is there a get player text? Go back, go back. Get player context. Excellent. There is, there is a get player context. Okay. So we're just going to do get. Well, let's see what this returns first. Get player context. This is what I want. So it's going to return a struct called sci fi player context. E oops. Equals get. 
player context. And now if this is valid, true is going to be cast a sci-fi player controller sci-fi player controller context dot get player controller or it's going to be null pointer okay so what we're essentially doing is this get owning player we're overwriting that node and it actually I'm actually kind of confused I don't think this would work No, this won't work. I have to make my own function. Get sci-fi owning player. This would be const. This doesn't need to be virtual. I will implement this. So essentially, what I will do, so I'll go a Yeah, I just go return. Well, let's see. There we go. That's what I want. And so this needs to be exposed to blueprints. Now I see that the get owning player is a virtual function. So what is the parent of this? user widget inherits from you widget okay so let's go there let's see if we can find get owning player here we go So in case if anyone was w uh, wondering, since I was able to, since this get owning player is templated, or it's a template type, I can just call this function like this. So don't have to do any casts because that template does the cast for me. And now let's add the U function node. And I think that's going to be it. I don't know what kind of comment to give this just yet. I'll probably give it a comment sometime off camera. Oh. 
but now we build. Ah. Oh shoot, do I have the project open? I sure do. It means all the hot reload stuff. Let's do this again. Cool. Come on, Epic Launcher. You can do it. There you go. Good boy. Maybe I spoke too early. Oh. It is inching right along. <gasps> Word game, Red Dragon, it's free. Go get it, guys. So now what I have to do is create a new folder, call it the inventory menu, going to go create a new widget. So WBP inventory menu, open it up, oops, I think it's in graph, class settings, make this a sci-fi user widget. So now I can do this, sci-fi owning player, look at that. Now I have a reference to the uh, player controller, so I can do get equipped weapons. See, this is why I think. How come you don't launch the project from Visual Studio using the debugger? Is there any benefit? So, from what I have experienced is that it is okay to launch Visual Studio, or sorry, launch the game from Visual Studio if you haven't made any changes in the header file or in your class's constructor. If you do make changes in the header file or in the class's constructor, then you'll experience hot reload issues. And so you'll have to close the um, the project or you would have to close the editor and reopen the editor from Visual Studio and personally since I'm coding so much stuff in Visual Studio I do make a lot of changes in the header file and in the constructor and waiting for 
Visual Studio to do load up all the debug stuff and everything. It takes a while for Visual Studio to load up the game um, from the debugger. Whereas launching it or opening it from the launcher, it's just a simple double click. Now, what I would do, let's say I finished the majority of my programming and now I'm spending the majority of my time testing, play testing, or writing blueprints, then yeah, I would you I would be in the debugger. I would open the project from Visual Studio. Because I wouldn't be making any changes in my classes header file or in the constructor. I would be making changes in blueprints most likely. And personally that is why I think it's a good idea to make a project on both C++ and Blueprints. You get the added benefit of C++ by doing all of your heavy uh, logic in C++. So like all of the for loops that I showed you for the inventory system and for spawning the weapons, that's a lot of for loops. And if I was to do that in Blueprints, who knows how bad that would be. Especially if I was to do that for multiplayer. It To me, it just makes more sense to do all of that stuff in C++, and then I call a function in Blueprint that just runs it. Um, because if you make a node in C++ and expose it to Blueprint, that node is going to, whenever it's called, it's going to execute just the same as if that function was executed in C++. So that's that's the design path that I take. But um yeah, hope that answers your your question, Danny K. Long story short, there's no issue with it if you want to wait uh wait out the time it takes for Visual Studio to load it up, then have at it. Personally, I don't like the fact that if I go into like my sci-fi user widget header file and I change one thing, I'm going to have hot, hot reload issues. So to me, it just makes more sense since I'm doing so much programming stuff to just open it up from the launcher. It's quicker that way. Okay, so I have a list of equipped items. Let's put something to real quick. Because this stream is over in 40 minutes so far. And I just started on the menu. I don't want this to go on for, for too long. Gosh, my, my first video was six hours. That was crazy. I don't want to replicate that. Like I think I think a couple hours is fine. You know, 3 hours would probably be be max that I would want a video to be cuz that's just that's just a lot of watching. I don't know. Maybe you guys like watching 3-hour videos. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe watching a 3-hour video wouldn't be so bad because if you can like follow along with it Personally, I've being in the in the military. I've been through so many PowerPoint presentations that anything on the TV screen instantly kills me. Death by PowerPoint. Okay, so let's do a. Horizontal box. Let's put that over here. That zero. Zero. Cool. 
So we can set that to be, I don't know, 900? Holy moly. So that means that would be negative 900? Yep. Uh, let's see. How big that would be. An image. Let's see how big that would be. Bill. Okay, so now we have to go and uh, create a function so then we can display the inventory menu. So let's go into the player controller. We have... Oh. It's the game instance, isn't it? Display, open pause menu, close pause menu. Um, block. Actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this comment called to open the inventory menu. It's going to show the mouse cursor. And hide player's HUD. Open. If inventory menu class is valid. The mouse cursor if player controller is valid. Okay. So now we can make the function void call open inventory menu. I'm going to take in the same parameter here. Cool. Now let's create that function, implement it. I think we're going to do the same thing we did in the pause menu. So actually, let's go ahead and create So this is actually going to be a use sci-fi widget, user widget. Inventory menu class. The widget class for the inventory menu the inventory menu that was created from the inventory menu class so class you sci-fi user widget inventory menu cool so in our sci-fi game instance that means we're going to have to do another include 
UI slash sci-fi user widget. Okay. So open inventory menu. If inventory menu class is valid, inventory menu is going to be use sci-fi user widget. Inventory menu class. If inventory menu, we're going to hide the player HUD. We're going to make the input UI only. Update the player controller's input mode and show the mouse cursor. Then display the inventory menu. Menu. Alright. So we're also going to create a close inventory menu function. menu and show the player's HUD. If the inventory menu widget is valid, okay. Void close inventory menu class A player controller player controller. So now we're going to do the close menu. So we're going to check if inventory menu is valid. To remove it, set it to null. If player controller is valid, do all that stuff. Player HUD visibility set to true. Go ahead up that to update that too. And if I do remember the player had equipped will automatically equip items the player had equipped from their last play session. on the possessed character. Cool. Okay, so we have the inventory menu function set up. Let's go ahead and build this.
Do do do. Almost there. Okay, cool. It's done. Let's load up this bad boy. Almost there. Okay, cool. So now let's go. Let's open up the player controller game. And let's create a new project settings, a new input binding. We'll call this toggle inventory menu. We'll make this tab and then special button left on the game pad. So this is called when this controller has possessed a pawn and both are ready to play. So toggle inventory menu. Do this here. We're going to do open inventory menu. Self. It's a UI called by player input. Call to open UI menus based on player input. Well, I cannot spell. So now let's go into the game instance. Delete this class defaults inventory menu. Let's see what happens. It did not like that. What happened? Line 153. All right, we shall look at line 153. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, close without sending. Now it should work.
Let's read it finished. <sighs> now if I click play, go tab, there's my giant white box. Cool. So WBP, and we're going to call this like equipment slot. I don't know what that's going to be in there just yet, but I do know I want this to be bigger. I just don't know how big. Um, because I want it to be like a ratio. So maybe I just make this full screen. And then I get, oops, I get two vertical widgets. Fill, fill, and Let's get another one too. Make that fill. So I would like this one take up half this one to take up half. So if I was put the image there, then if I copy and put an image here, let's change this color to uh, a different color. Cancel, okay. I just wanna see, hmm. I think that's fine, but I think this needs to take up more space. So maybe like 0.75. One? No. 0.7 maybe. I think that looks fine. That gives enough space to show off the character, I think. And then show off the items. Then if I was to do this in a new window, yeah, I think that's enough room. I think that's enough room. Um, so now I can take this. I want to do like... Actually, let's control Z that. And let's just do a back background with like some transparency behind it. Hmm. I was to go get sci fi game instance. And I was to do like item get item nope. <laughs> so that's not blueprint okay callable Well, I do know there would be three weapons, right? So, in here, I would actually make an overlay. Put it 
here. Oops. Yeah, let's make that fill, overlay, and then we can do the mm, Equipment slot. Actually, going to rename this and call it Weapon Slot. So I do know this is going to have a variable be called weapon data e sci-fi weapon item object reference instant settable expose on spawn then on Construct, let's see, let's delete this. Let's make a button. We can make we can make sci-fi buttons. Let's make a sci-fi button. Actually this makes me wanna get rid of that. Is this a variable? I don't want that to be a variable. Well, let's see. Weapon slot button, I guess is what I can call it. Then I can give it button text and then this would be weapon name So I can go here, oopsies, weapon name, set text, weapon data, item name, This is weird. What did I call it? Did I not make it blueprint readable? I did not. I suck at this. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> Let's change that. Blue print read only. Oh, I already have it right there. Okay. Item description. Item rarity. I think that's it. So let's build this again.
Okay. Almost there. All right, weapon slot. Item name. see what this would look like. Just curious. Let's play this tab in nothing, which makes sense. Okay. Access none, trying to read property weapon data, because weapon data is null. Something I also want to do is pause menu. It needs to be focusable. Is focusable. So that fixes the error from the pause menu from earlier. Same thing with the inventory, is focusable. Okay, so now we're going to do get equipped weapons for each spawn, or is it? Create widget. This is going to be the weapon slot. Boom. Owning player. Boom. Then this is going to be called. Uh, Equipment menu, I guess is what I'm going to call it. Make that a variable. Equipment menu, add child here, here, pile save, and if I play, holy crap, we have a whole bunch. Interesting. Oh, did I not delete the other one? I did not. Hmm.
So there is assault rifle, pistol, assault rifle, pistol. Why is there four? Let's do get length. Let's see what that is first. Print string. Play. It's two, but it gets called twice. Why does it get called twice? Hmm. I want to see something. Oops, not mobile. Selected viewport. Two and two. anything so are makes me wonder are there two inventory menus getting created nothing in there just have that string hello okay let's we can actually figure that out by just breaking this let's see it says hello twice So this means this is getting called twice. Why is this getting called twice?
I do not understand. So for some reason, inventory menu is printing twice. Oops. I just want to unpossess. Here we see, isn't it supposed to write hello to the log too? Oh no, I have to, sorry, I have to possess, push tab, display viewport, hello. Yeah, that's weird, it's getting called twice. Hello, hello. I'm actually kind of curious now. Yeah, the pause menu gets called twice. Hmm. This is something that I'm going to have to research and figure out why this is happening. Long blueprint user message. Hello, hello. Yeah, let's see. So. so weird that is super weird all right guys so this is probably where i'm going to end it we we know that <laughs> it kind of works it looks ugly and we ran into an issue that also affects the pause menu so it probably also affects the hud too Let's find out. Print string. No, the HUD is only once.
the HUD is interesting. And the HUD is called during the right here. During the begin playing state. So I don't know, maybe it's the way I have the function set up. I'm going to look into this off camera. It's getting pretty late. This stream's already two and a half hours long. So this is where I'm going to end it. Um, so that means there is going to be a part two. And I'll go over what I did to go and resolve this issue. Uh, I want to thank everyone who took the time to stop by during the live stream, say hi. And for any future viewers out there that's watching this, um, feel free to subscribe, join the Discord. In the Discord, you can reach out for help. If there is anything during the shows that are confusing, that is confusing to you, or maybe you're doing your own project and you just want help from other developers that's in the Discord, it's a good place to hang out meet new people so join it and you can reach out get support and if you're following along with with this uh, series you can and you're confused reach out can explain things better to you and all that good stuff so feel free to like this video like and subscribe so then you can uh, stay up to date with the series so with that guys thank you for stopping by and I will see you guys later